let's take it away, and we'll see how we do. Um, great. Thank you so much. Indra, uh, let's, Indra has, as you can probably see, had a fairly stressful morning. So let's give him a massive round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> is, this, is this your first time presenting in New Zealand? Uh, yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. So we're going to make you feel absolutely welcome and understand that hiccups like this are just something that happens. So take it away, Indra. Have fun. We'll find a way to make it fun. It's a bit of a shame that we can't necessarily get it running on your laptop, but we'll make this work. It'll be great. And Thank you so much. If we have someone whose code is running well on their laptop, consider whether you'd volunteer to sort of plug it into the display and we could actually show people how it's going. Cool. Okay, take it away. Thank you, Tom. So, like, hi, uh, I'm Indra. Like, full name is Indra Nil Ghosh, so you can call me Indra. So I'm a PhD student uh, in applied mathematics from Mass University. And today I'm going to present a tutorial on unconstrained numerical optimization. So, and this is my uh, Twitter handle. You can uh, check me on Twitter. Uh, and thanks Kiwi PyCon for giving me this opportunity to present here today. Uh, so I'll just make it control A like this. Uh, how to make it full screen? Uh, Okay, as I said, like I'm a PhD student in maths, and uh, so like I know Python, and I know R a little bit R and a little bit MATLAB too. Uh, so what the situation is like in my uh, department, everyone uses MATLAB, but I'm the only one who uses Python, and this is Python is my go-to language for every uh, problems that I'm trying to solve. So yeah, a Python nerd, big Python nerd. <laughs> and some hobbies about me so that you know like who is presenting the tutorial to you today so i'm a huge poetry nerd i follow football uh, okay what's happened uh, what just happened oh okay all right uh, so i follow uh, football anime and a big metal fan so if you are interested in any of this just come and talk to me <laughs> yeah i'll be happy to share my like day-to-day -day, day -day things with you. <laughs> okay, so like the serious stuff. So, so this tutorial is meant to be a pedagogical introduction to unconstrained numerical optimization. And uh, so both unconstrained and constrained optimization. So I'll talk about what these two things are uh, like uh, later. But uh, unconstrained optimization is the starting point of this whole, uh, what to say, like field. And uh, that's why I'm trying to like instead of like uh, covering everything uh, in a single tutorial, I thought of like just starting up with an uh, unconstrained one, and uh, that will really help you to like shift later to constrained if you want. And uh, so this field is a little bit uh, mathematically rigorous, and uh, but what I will try to do is like I'll try to cover both the theoretical part and the uh, like hand-on implementation. So that was actually the plan. So I was uh, planning to like run the codes live uh, like in uh, Jupyter. But I think if I share the uh, GitHub repo, that can be done. Uh, I don't know. Like, we'll see. And uh, so th th that's the plan. And uh, today I'm going to use four main uh, packages. So if you are from data science background. So uh, w one thing like, uh, who are from natural sciences background? Awesome. Three, all right. And who are from engineering background? Cool. Uh, economics, finance, and any other field that I didn't mention? Ecology? Ecology? Oh, uh, sorry? Biology. Biology, okay, awesome. All right. Uh, so, like, uh, and any one of you who uses data science in their day-to-day -day job? Cool. So, <laughs> I think most of you have, uh, like, come across this uh, NumPy package. So, it's a very, uh, what to say, like, uh, important package if you are trying to do numerical stuffs, mostly numerical algebra. And uh, so SciPy is another uh, important package which is uh, extensively used in this uh, uh, like uh, scientific fields, mostly in high energy physics or uh, what 
to say like uh, astronomy. And uh, so I came across this package Autograd when I was trying to learn uh, this uh, numerical optimization stuffs. And uh, it's a very cool package, and I will show uh, how uh, we use it extensively later. And obviously, Matplotlib for uh, like visualizations. So what I expect from you people is like a little bit uh, of Python, introductory Python knowledge, like uh, downloading libraries and like uh, and packages and like uh, using them. And little mathematical knowledge uh, in terms of vectors and matrices. So if you know what vectors and matrices are, you are uh, all right to follow this whole tutorial. So uh, like I started this uh, whole uh, thing like this. Uh, I actually have a blog on this topic. So in this, uh, if, if you go to this uh, uh, like link, you can find the blog. So uh, what actually motivated me to start this blog was uh, I was trying to find out uh, like a book kind of thing where uh, we have not only the mathematical uh, backgrounds but also like code implementations. But unfortunately, I didn't find any. Uh, so most of the books, the good books that I found, uh, were mostly mathematical stuff, and like and they they were rigorous. Uh, but in some books, there were some uh, pseudo codes, but uh, like it's really sometimes it becomes difficult to like uh, translate the pseudo code to your uh, comfort language, like mine was Python, and uh, so I wanted to bring everything together, <laughs> like create a blog for myself. Like it started as a uh, what to say, like uh, personal note kind of thing, and then I after I had a like. Uh, like working structure, I thought of why not sharing this uh, with other people. So that's the motivation. Okay, so this is the link to the GitHub repo. So if you have uh, like uh, down, like cloned the repo, that would be really helpful uh, for me also. <laughs> okay, so the books. Uh, first, this No Saddle and Write. Uh, this numerical optimization book, and this is the uh, what to say like you can call it the Bible of <laughs> numerical optimization. But the thing is, it's uh, like mathematically heavy, and uh, I was finding it very difficult to uh, understand the basic stuffs uh, so when I was starting out with uh, this optimization. Uh, so. What helped me in that situation was this book uh, by Snyman and Wilke. Uh, it's also mathematically rigorous, but not uh, like No Sadal and Wright. So, uh, like, it really helps you uh, to get the basic stuffs. Actually, if you want to know, like, if you are a novice, if you are trying to start from zero, uh, start with Snyman and Wilke. And uh, like, if you have a like, if you have an engineering background. Uh, and you are trying to use optimization for uh, like application kind of stuffs. Uh, start with Rao's book, and obviously Epperson's book. I think Epperson, uh, mo like his approach is mostly in numerical, uh, like basic numerical stuffs, but uh, like numerical methods and all. But this book also covers uh, like a part of optimization, so you can follow that also if you are starting out. So these four books. Uh, so I have. So the whole uh, note is based on this. The whole tutorial is based on these four books, and I will mention like where exactly I have used this. Uh, so okay, sorry. So this that was supposed to be the last one, <laughs> last slide. So I'll move into the uh, repo. Oh, okay. All right, I'll, uh, what's happening? Hmm. So is this uh, like clear? Okay, awesome. 
Okay, so uh, we need to install the uh, NumPy and SciPy packages. Uh, I think if you're using Jupyter Notebooks, uh, you will already have this inbuilt, but in case that doesn't work, I think you have to uh, pip install uh, NumPy and SciPy. I think matplotlib is uh, inbuilt, so I didn't show that there here, but if it gives any error, you have to uh, like uh, download matplotlib also. Okay, uh, so introduction to optimization. So what's what's op what is optimization actually? So like given a function f, so and it's a scalar function. Suppose it's a scalar function. So we will deal with scalar functions for this tutorial. So scalar function uh, in the sense that whatever it doesn't matter what we input, it will always output a single value, a scalar value. So let fx be a scalar function of a vector of variable. So here, this uh, bold uh, this bold letter denotes a vector, and it's made up of uh, multiple n ele elements. So we see there, uh, like uh, enumerated as x1, x2 till xn, and this vector. If you know what a vector is, so this is a. Uh, it can be also treated as a matrix. It's an uh, n cross one matrix here. Yeah. So n rows, one column. Yep. So uh, this is an n cross one matrix, uh, which is a column vector. And this uh, belongs to the n dimensional space, the Euclidean space. And uh, the numerical optimization is the process of minimizing this function or maximizing this function, whatever you want, uh, subject to some constraints that you uh, impose on this uh, variable x, uh, this uh, vector x, sorry which is a variable. And uh, this f is a scalar function of x, and we will call it uh, objective function from now on. So that's the lingo of this whole uh, optimization stuff. And this x i, so like x1 to xn, they are called decision variables. And uh, so if you are, so th this, this second bullet point, it's not necessary for this uh, tutorial, but just to uh, make you know. So if, so this is how you formulate in mathematical terms. So you minimize the function f of x, uh, where x belongs to this n-dimensional Euclidean space, subject to this uh, inequalities or equalities. So these inequalities and equalities represent the uh, constraints. But as I said, that we are only dealing with unconstrained optimization here, so uh, we won't spend much time here. And uh, so next, the important part is what's a solution. So a solution of this, uh, so th this is what we are trying to find. So we are trying to uh, find the uh, solution of f of x, which is given by this point x star. So this x star is, the, is that vector where f of x has either a minimum or a maximum value. So, but, uh, like there can be multiple uh, minimum or maximum values, like uh, depending on where uh, your initial point is. So, uh, like that's an important uh, what to say, like uh, problem to consider. So that's uh, what I'll mention next. So, in case of minimization problem, the optimum vector x star is referred to as a global minimizer. Global minimizer of f, if only if this is the only uh, like optimum point. So, but there might be, as I said, there might be uh, multiple points depending on what initial uh, point you choose. And uh, in that case, uh, like it's the minimizer is called a local minimizer of F. And uh, it depends on uh, the neighborhood N of that point X star. And what happens is like uh, for this uh, point x star, if it is a global minimizer, f of x star should always, like it will always be less than equals to f of x for any other values of x. So that's what uh, is indicated here. And uh, if there are multiple, like if it's a local uh, minimizer, uh, if x star is a local minimizer depending on uh, the initial point, f of x star, uh, again, f of x star would be less than f of x for all values of x lying in that neighborhood 
all right? It shouldn't lie outside the neighborhood. And uh, so if, so now we will consider only uh, the uh, minimization tasks, but if you want to do maximization, you can tweak uh, the whole problem uh, in this way. So like the maximization of the function f of x is given by uh, the negative of minimize, minimization of the function minus f of x. All right, so this is a way to uh, like uh, change the whole problem into a maximization problem. Yeah. Uh, so another important stuff, uh, scaling. So scaling of decision variables mean like sometimes what happens is like while formulating these problems, uh, it should always be guaranteed that the scale of the de decision variables, I mean the uh, like uh, vector x, are approximately of the same order. So if that's not taken care of, what will happen is like the optimization problem, the algorithm will uh, not perform in a way you want it to be. So it will find it very difficult to converge at the solution. So two important, like two basic things that you can do is like uh, scale the values between zero and one, or uh, uh, sorry, like two of the fundamental fields that get disturbed due to this poor scaling is like, uh, the optimization step lengths and also the gradient. So we'll see what gradients are uh, just after this. And uh, so one like basic thing that you can do is like you can uh, make the variables dimensionless just by um, like uh, using some algorithm to scale the values between zero and one. So I think uh, who are like whoever you of you are from uh, data science background can relate to this. Like uh, most often what people does is like they uh, scale the values between zero and one to make it uh, tractable. Uh, so yeah, so this is an important thing to keep in mind. So yeah, so gradient vector and Hessian. So for a differentiable function f of x, uh, which uh, can be mapped from R of n, so n-dimensional uh, Euclidean space to the solution, which lies in, uh, like which is a scalar, which is represented by just R. So one dimensional Euclidean space. So the gradient vector uh, is given by this uh, no, like notation. Uh, it's called nabla, nabla fx, uh, which is defined at, 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 at that point x uh, in n-dimensional space as the vector of first order uh, partial derivatives. So we can see that these are all partial derivatives. So delta, del f, del x1 to del f, del xn. And uh, the Hessian is uh, similarly is a twice continuously differentiable function, and which is given by uh, this uh, formula, and uh, where we can see that these are all uh, second order partial derivatives. And you don't need to worry about the formula formulas here because we are going to use autograd uh, in Python, which will directly take care of this, like directly take care of the calculation of these things. And there is another uh, important con concept called Jacobian matrix, uh, which is the, which is related to the Hessian uh, in this way. So this is the formula which relates Jacobian and Hessian of the function f of x, like the objective function. So uh, now I'll uh, deal with an example. So let an objective function uh, be f of x, which is given by this uh, formula. So what we'll do is like we'll find out the gradient vector of uh, like nabla f of x and the Hessian matrix at this particular point uh, one comma two comma three. So this is a vector. At that particular point, we'll find the value of nabla f of x and h of f of x. Uh, so the mm, like analytical formula for nabla f of x is given by this, and and uh, I'm just showing it here just for the sake of like. Uh, to show that uh, while if we use autograd to calculate these values, it will give the same values. And uh, so this is the actual value uh, of uh, the gradient of f of x at that point p. And the Hessian is also given by this, which uh, uh, like at point p is given by this uh, matrix. So we'll, we'll use autograd. And uh, so we need both numpy and autograd to calculate this. Uh, I was supposed to run this cell, but uh, like as you can see, like we will import uh, AutoGrad, and from AutoGrad we'll import the uh, import the Grad and Jacobian uh, functions, and uh, we will define the objective function f of x, 
and we'll calculate grad of f and hessian f so if any one of you can run this and tell me just that it's working it would be very helpful <laughs> so you see w if we run this cell it will give the gradient vector as this and the hessian matrix as this Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, you have to import NumPy, NumPy as NP also. I'm sorry, that I should have added that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, otherwise this will uh, fail, np.array. <laughs> Is it working? OK, awesome. Thank you. OK, so as you can see, the gradient vector uh, is 43, 60, and 39, as we uh, saw here, like the analytical value. So it's working. <laughs> it feels so good. <laughs> And similarly, the Hessian matrix also gives this value, uh, which is similar to the analytical value, if you calculate by hand. So I don't recommend doing that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, so now uh, the most important part of this uh, optimization uh, concept is like you have to calculate this uh, uh, like value called the directional derivative. So uh, we, we use directional derivative in calculating uh, the direction at which the minimization happens when uh, it follows some steps. So I'll, I'll show that uh, in the upcoming slides. But for now, uh, we only deal with this uh, term called the directional derivative. So what, what's that? So for a real valued objective function, f of x, and a feasible direction delta, so this is a vector. Uh, so if from high school uh, physics stuffs, if you remember, so like a vector is used, so it's, it has both magnitude and uh, direction. So that's the concept here. So it's a vector, uh, this uh, delta, and the directional derivative of f of x in this direction delta is given by uh, this formula where we use the limit and everything, but you don't need to worry about that. So the final formula is this. So I actually wrote it down just to show the steps. Uh, the final formula is this, where you see this, this T represents the transpose. And uh, what's happening is, uh, so this nebula f of x is a vector. Is a col if you remember, it's a column vector. By transposing, I make it uh, uh, a row vector. And delta is a column vector. So if you uh, like do a dot product, it will give a scalar value. So that's the whole thing. So it gives the... Um, Directional derivative, and uh, so, and one thing is like this delta is a unit vector. So unit vector in the sense, uh, okay, I want to. So the norm of delta is one. So I want to like show you what that actually is. Uh, if I can plug in the tablet. <laughs> Oh, it's installing. Oh, what's happening? <laughs> it should run the whiteboard directly. <laughs> None of the softwares are working in my <laughs> laptop. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you that for someone whose laptop has decided, has decided to betray them in the morning of the presentation, you're yeah. doing amazing. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I had a lot of stuffs previously. I think I lost everything. <laughs> All right, but I will. So yeah, so as I was saying, like this delta is one, right? So what it means is like this norm, so this, this uh, actually means the norm of a vector. So what it is, is like uh, if, suppose delta is given by, uh, as I said, it's a column vector. So A, B, C, suppose it has three elements. So what will happen is, uh, uh, 
sorry? Oh, so the Jupyter notebooks? Is it working? Uh, Tom, I think it's all right because people are running in their system. I can just show the like notebooks as I was showing before. Cool. For now, I think it's all right. Yeah. Yeah. So just let me know uh, when I ask you like whether it's working or not. Just if you, yeah, let me know. Thank you. Yeah. So this will. So this actually means the square root of a square plus b square plus c square and the like w to have to calculate the directional derivative we need this uh, direction to be unit uh, like to be a unit vector that means this square root of a square plus b square plus c square should always be one so that's the requirement all right so this is uh, the formula and uh, so if you have this vector a b c so this is how we calculate the norm and uh, as I said, like this is this term, nabla f of x transpose uh, the dot product of nabla f of x transpose and uh, sorry, uh, the dot product of nabla f of x and uh, the directional uh, derivative delta should uh, gives the directional. Uh, sorry, this is not the directional derivative. This is the direction, and the whole uh, dot product product gives the directional derivative. So. Uh, an example again. So suppose we have this objective function f of x, and uh, we will find out the gradient vector uh, at the point p, as we did before, and then calculate the directional uh, derivative of the direction delta. Uh, suppose you see here, like uh, I have chosen the elements in such a way that the uh, it's a it's a unit vector. So if you do the square root of uh, this first term square plus second term square, square and the third term square, it will give one. And uh, so, like, we are, uh, so this is the cell where I uh, like choose p, so np dot array uh, one two three as I showed here, and we choose delta, which is the direction, and we calculate the uh, gradient f, and then we calculate the directional derivative. We see this gives a scalar value seventy point six five. Four eight nine. So if you can run the cell, that would be good. <laughs> okay. So I think I'm already running late, so I'll uh, pick up the pace. So here, uh, next, uh, positive definite and positive semi-definite uh, matrices. So positive definite matrices means like a real matrix M uh, is called uh, positive definite. If this, uh, uh, for any real vector v which lies in uh, the Euclidean, n-dimensional Euclidean space, this uh, formula is maintained. And uh, for positive semi-definite, you just need to uh, replace this uh, greater than symbol with greater than equals to. That's it. So again, like an example, uh, we'll see, we use a Python script to compute the eigenvalues and check whether these three, which of the following matrices are positive definite or positive semi-definite or negative definite. So negative definite means none of these uh, equations 11 and 12 are maintained. So if you run this cell, uh, you'll see that M is positive definite. Uh, has anyone run it? OK, awesome. Uh, then convexity. Uh, I think it's all right if I don't mention it here because uh, OK, I'll do that. Uh, so a set x is called uh, a convex set. Uh, if, again, like uh, for two uh, vectors, x comma y, lying, uh, which, is a, uh, which lies in this uh, set x, and for a scalar value alpha, which lies between 0 and 1, this following uh, equation is maintained. Uh, this, the concept of convexity is used extens extensively in like a very complicated uh, optimization algorithms. So you can check this let out later. So, but yeah, uh, I'll just keep it for now. Okay, so, oops. Uh, so numerical optimization algorithms. So I took this uh, from uh, Nocidal and Wright. Uh, so I have mentioned uh, the edition number here, 2006's edition. So it states that most of the optimization strategies uh, make use of the, either the objective function f of x and the 
constraint functions that I showed previously. The first or the second derivatives of these state functions, uh, the informations collected during previous iterations and all local uh, information gathered at the present point. So uh, for an optimization algorithm to be good, these three uh, properties should be maintained. So they should be robust. So that, what does that mean? So for all acceptable initial points chosen for the algorithm to run, it should operate well on a broad range of problems, So, which is actually not possible all the time, but it's better if you make your code as robust as possible. And uh, efficiency, obviously, the time complexity and the space complexity, ma complexity matters, matter a lot. And uh, accuracy. <laughs> So, uh, like, accuracy in the sense, like, it sh as you are doing numerical stuff, so it, it would not be obviously exact to the analytical value, but uh, in the order of 10 to the power minus 4 or 10 to the power minus 5 uh, is a good uh, thing to aim for. So that's the first slide. Uh, sorry, first notebook. Uh, So unconstrained optimization. So uh, here's the uh, important things. So, and uh, so Tom, how much time I have spent? Uh, uh, Tom, how much time have I spent? Uh, the, time, the current time is eleven twenty-eight. Eleven twenty-eight. Okay. Uh, so unconstrained optimization. So, so whatever. <laughs> Uh, so an unconstrained optimization uh, problem deals with finding the, as I said, like the local minimizer x star of a real valued and smooth objective function f of x of n variables, uh, which is uh, formulated as this. So we minimize f of x, uh, where x lies in uh, this n-dimensional Euclidean space. But as we are not giving any restrictions to uh, this optimization uh, problem, so it's called unconstrained. So our... Uh, main goal is to work towards computing x star such that for all x uh, near this point x star the following in inequality is always satisfied so the value of the objective function f at that x star should always be less than or equal to any other uh, like x like less than or equal to the value of the function for any other x close to x star so that's the whole goal so then there are these necessary and sufficient conditions uh, for uh, the optimization algorithm to work. Uh, so if you want more detail, just follow Nosedal and Wright. But for now, uh, the first, so there are two things. Uh, the first order necessary condition and the second order uh, necessary and sufficient condition. So the first order necessary condition means like uh, this, so that ne nebula f of x star should be always zero, but as we are doing uh, numerical stuff, so it should be very, very close to zero in, like, as I said, like, uh, order of 10 to the minus four or five, that's a good thing to aim for. But, so this is the first uh, condition to be maintained. So let's uh, look into an example. The f uh, we are, for this uh, particular example, we are considering the Rosenbrock function as the objective function which is given by this for n variables, but uh, we'll do for two variables, uh, which uh, reduces to this uh, value. And we'll show that the first order necessary condition is satisfied for the local minimizer x star. Uh, so we know this by analytical uh, calculations that one, uh, if we do, like if we choose this point one comma one, this value will always be zero. So you, you can just see here, right? So x2 is one and x1 square is one, so this, the first term is zero, and also here we have one minus x1, which is zero, for one comma one. Uh, so, and uh, nebula f x uh, at that uh, value, uh, like x star, the minimizer, also gives analytically the value zero comma zero, so uh, what we exactly want. So that matches, so let's now use the analysis using uh, scipy uh, dot optimize package so so we need these three uh, 
things first. So we need to import NumPy as NP. We need to import SciPy. And then from SciPy.optimize, we import. Uh, so this Rosen block function is already inbuilt uh, in SciPy.optimize. So I've used that instead of like writing it uh, by my own. So Rosen DER means the derivative, uh, like the nabla f of x. That means the gradient. And Rosen HES means the Hessian. So you can, these are all inbuilt, uh, inbuilt functions uh, given in SciPy.optimize. So uh, the f we are calculating uh, at 1, 1, and if we check Rosen at 1, 1, it will give 0. That's what we want. And so x star is a minimizer. And then we can check the first order uh, necessary condition. So for that, we need uh, the derivative. So Rosen dir uh, t -er at xm also gives 0, 0. So this matches our uh, calculations and also sat satisfies the first order uh, necessary condition. And the second order necessary condition uh, means there are two, uh, in, like, uh, two equalities and inequalities to be followed. Obviously, the uh, first order necessary condition, uh, with, like, in addition to the dot product of, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, so th this term, so delta, uh, no, I was right, okay. So this is the uh, like uh, dot product of uh, the direction delta with the Hessian of f of x star. That should be uh, greater than or equals to zero. So that means the Hessian, so this actually means the Hessian matrix should be positive semi-definite. So if it is, uh, so if a matrix is positive semi-definite, uh, this will, this value will always be greater than or equals to zero. So these are the two things that need to be maintained. So again, like uh, we, uh, so okay, for here for this example, we consider the Himmelblos function. So here we have to write it uh, by our own because it's not inbuilt. And we'll again check at the, uh, whether x uh, star three comma two is a, uh, like uh, we'll check whether at this point, the, the second order necessary, uh, second order sufficient conditions are maintained. So we'll again use the autograd package to do the analysis and uh, let us first define the function uh, as we define him, h i double m. And so we write it by our own. And uh, we also initialize the x star, which is 3, 2. And uh, then what we do is like we print uh, the function at x star, the value of the function at x star. So him x star. And that gives 0. So this is a local minimizer. Now we calculate the gradient vector and the Hessian matrix uh, of the function at x star and look into the results. So this cell actually calculates everything and uh, it, if we run this cell, it tells us that the gradient vector at x star is 0, 0, which we want. The eigenvalues of m are also being calculated uh, because we needed to calculate uh, to see whether uh, m is a positive definite matrix or not. So, and M is actually a positive definite matrix. So if you run this cell, you will get these results. So, and you can actually check with other functions also if you want. Uh, and yeah, so these are being maintained. So that's what we want. And uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> shouldn't do that. Uh, so like, uh, okay, so algorithms for solving unconstrained uh, minimization tasks. So what, we will look into is uh, uh, what's happening here. The rendering is not working. <laughs> Anyhow, so uh, we will look into this uh, line search descent method uh, uh, in the next slides. So as I said, like uh, one of the important terminating conditions for our algorithm uh, is to check whether the first order necessary condition is sufficiently accurate that means, uh, like for a smooth objective function, the norm of this uh, uh, gradient should be less than a uh, infinitesimal uh, tolerance value, which is epsilon. Uh, it ca you can choose it to be ten to the power minus four or ten to the power minus five, uh, if you want. And we'll discuss the conditions, uh, these conditions further in the later chapters. So. Fundamentally, there are two uh, approaches uh, available to generate x. So if x n comma one, uh, sorry, n plus one from f x n. So this means the value of 
the objective function at a particular point and the value of the same objective function at the next point, which is chosen using uh, some directional uh, algorithm. So we'll see that later. So the most important thing is the line search descent method for this. So what we do is like using this method, the optimization algorithm first picks a direction. So we need a direction at which the minimization will happen. So uh, it picks a direction uh, delta n for the nth step and performs a search along that direction from the previous generated uh, iterate xn minus 1. So I'll just draw to give a visual picture. Oops, how I go down? Yes. So let's consider a. I apologize for my. Oops. I apologize for my <laughs> drawing. So suppose uh, this is the contour of f x, and x is actually a two-dimensional. Uh, vector. So that means we will have x1 and x2. And suppose you start from this point. Suppose this is xn. So you need to choose a direction. Uh, so we'll have a, so this line search descent methods allows you to choose a direction. So suppose this direction which gives the next point. So this point is xn plus 1. So this way you continue and end up at, suppose this is the, oops. Suppose this is the minimizer. My drawing is pretty bad. <laughs> but anyhow, like if you start from a point xn, you choose the directions, and in a zigzaggy manner, you end up with uh, x star. And this, this is what the line search descent, descent direction algorithm hel helps you with. Uh, a direction delta n is selected for the next iterate uh, if the following condition is satisfied. <laughs> okay. So. So this actually means oops. So this is the, uh, so this is the condition for choosing the direction, like uh, next, like if you start from point x n minus one, to choose the next uh, direction, uh, delta n, you need to uh, follow this formula. I'm sorry, it's no, the notebook is not being rendered somehow. Uh, so it's giving this, Pretty weird. Anyhow, so like, uh, so that's the whole thing. So we need to follow this uh, uh, condition. So there is another method called trust region method, but uh, that's out of the scope of this thing, whole thing. So this whole tutorial. So I'll just keep it. And uh, actually, this is uh, uh, the repo, the GitHub repo. So <laughs> yeah, it's not the notebooks. I have to run the notebooks to like make the rendering happen, which is not working. Uh, anyhow, so we'll move on to the next thing. So 
to, now to choose this direction, we need to solve one-dimensional optimization problems. So that means, like, uh, the aim of this chapter is to, like, this uh, uh, notebook is to introduce methods for solving one-dimensional uh, optimization tasks, which is uh, formulated in this way. One-dimensional means, like, uh, here, x is just a scalar. So instead of using any vectors, where it's just a scalar. So it's just made of one value. So that's why it's one-dimensional. And uh, here, f is a nonlinear function. And uh, we can uh, the understanding of these optimization tasks and algorithms will be generalized in solving unconstrained uh, optimization tasks later. So for this, we need uh, the concept of unimodal function. So a function f of x uh, is called unimodal. Uh, if for a particular value, x star, on a real line, the following conditions are satisfied. So f is mono monotonically decreasing if x lies on the left of a particular value v. And f is monotonically increasing if x lies uh, on the right of that particular value v. So suppose like this. So this, for a particular uh, point here, which is slightly greater than 0, you can see that uh, the function decreases, and then it starts increasing. So it monotonically decreases, and then monotonically increases. And uh, if the above two conditions are satisfied, then f of x star is a minimum value. So this can be uh, understood from intuition itself, that f of x star is the minimum value of f of x. And x star is the minim minimizer of f. So here I'm just plotting the function 5x squared minus 3x plus 2. Uh, I don't know why I chose that, but <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it, that shows a pretty good uh, like unimodal function. So if you run this cell, uh, I think uh, it will plot this function. Uh, is it is the plotting work plot working? Okay. Uh, so now the given steps continue. Uh, okay. Uh, so what we can do here? Uh, I'm just thinking what to like. Uh, okay. So we have considered this uh, quadratic function f of x, and it's a nonlinear unimodal function where the interval is chosen between minus two and two to initialize with, and uh, this. Uh, so we, which are represented by this uh, defined over minus 2 comma 2. Uh, the minimizer is 0 0.3, slightly greater than 0, uh, which can be solved analytically. Given the middle dotted line lies inside the interval minus 2 comma 2. OK. OK, these are some unnecessary stuff. So I just wrote this for myself. But yeah, you can choose, two, uh, you can choose uh, two new points at each iteration. And another point, x2, which lies, uh, so xl denotes the left uh, point which you start with, initialize with. And xr denotes the right point which you initialize with. So this, this denotes the interval. And uh, so in the next iteration, uh, x1 will lie between xl comma xr and uh, x2 will lie between xr comma xr, xr. And if f of x2 is greater than f of x, x1, the new interval becomes, so you shorten the interval now at each step. So xl comma x2 and xr becomes x2 here. So this way, like uh, you continue and you end up with the, uh, like you keep on shrinking the uh, like interval until and unless the interval becomes like uh, the, Length, on the, uh, length of the interval becomes very close to 0. So these given steps continue iteratively until the convergence is satisfied uh, to a given limit of the minimizer. Obviously, we need a limit here. So this class of methods is called uh, the elimination method. So we keep on eliminating the uh, like extra bits of the interval until and unless it uh, shrinks, to the, to shrinks to a single line, if you are considering a two-dimensional case. So here we have two methods, Fibonacci uh, search and golden section. But uh, we will look into the Fibonacci search one. So Rao's book uh, gives a detailed ex explanation of the whole thing. So uh, if you, uh, uh, I think you might have come across this uh, Fibonacci numbers. Uh, so the sequence is given by this formula. So if not 
is zero and f1 is one, and then you keep on uh, calculating f n depending uh, on this f not and f1, following this formula f n minus one plus f n minus two. So you can actually use this cell to generate the first n Fibonacci numbers. So here I'm showing the first 15 Fibonacci numbers. And uh, so for the Fibonacci search method, well, as I said, like we, so this is the whole uh, uh, steps, the explanation of the whole steps. If you want to go through them, please go through them. But uh, I'll just uh, tell that this R is the like uh, interval un uncertainty. So the thing is, uh, at each step, you compute this value of r, and uh, th this is the reduction ratio. So what happens is like at each step, you calculate r and see whether it's decreasing uh, and in like tending towards zero. As soon as this r becomes like very close to zero, you stop and uh, then you see the value of x. and that will most probably be the uh, like minimizer of the function f of x. So this is the whole uh, function for doing that. Uh, so you need to run this uh, fiv search uh, function to work with the example. Uh, so here the example uh, in the example I calculate this uh, I considered this uh, function f of x, and we will use the Fibonacci search algorithm to find the minimizer x star. So taking n equals to 25, uh, so we need uh, to initialize the number of uh, Fibonacci numbers it need, the algorithm needs to calculate. So here we are taking n equals to 25, and the initial interval of the uncertainty. So, so this is the tricky part. So getting the uncertainty interval, uh, it needs some, some kind of knowledge of the, uh, like, function f of x, but which is not, in real world scenario, it's not always uh, possible. But yeah, that's the, that's the constraint, actually, if you can <laughs> think like that. But yeah, you need to have some idea, like uh, what's, how the function is going to work. But here we are considering this uncertainty. And we define the function f of x. And uh, the function f of x looks like this, if we run the cell. What's okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. So, like, uh, then we use the fiv search uh, function that we just uh, mentioned here. So you have uh, you need to run this cell to work uh, to make this cell work. So, and we are storing the uh, value in fiv fib, and we see that x star. So this returns x star, the minimizer, the value of the function at uh, that x star, and also the reduction ratio. So we see that it's working pretty smooth. So x star is uh, around 2. f of x star is this value, minus 43. And the fire final reduction ratio is, although it shows 0, 0.0, but uh, like numerically, I think it's around 10 to the power minus 4 or 5, if I remember. So, but yeah. So but this works pretty good. Uh, now to show the positions of x star and f x star on the graph, so we just make some more tweaks, and so this blue line denotes the position of the minimizer at uh, that this function. We see that it's two, and uh, uh, the value of the function f of x at that point, f of x star is around minus 43. So if you draw a horizontal line, you can see that. Uh, yeah. So you can also modify the function a little bit and use the pandas uh, package. So for that, you need to also import pandas as PD. I should have mentioned that. <laughs> but yeah. So you need, if you want to do this, you can do this. But uh, this pd.dataframe function uh, allows you to like uh, gather all the uh, steps, values, and that's what I've done here. So it gives, so you see the reduction ratio starts from 0 0.38. It keeps on reducing and ends up to be 0. Actually, it's uh, 
even more than minus 10 to the power minus 6, which is really very good. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so this is the graph of the change of the reduction ratio. So if you see, it starts from around 0 0.38 and like uh, continuously keeps on going down until it uh, gives an asymptote at zero. So uh, in the next uh, section, we will discuss some direct root finding methods. So the first one is the, uh, so three tolerances, because if you look into this line, uh, the norm of uh, x minus xj should be less than tolerance one. So you can either use, so you can use any of the combinations. So I, you, here I have used and and or. So either if, if this condition is satisfied or the combination of these two conditions are satisfied, uh, you're, like, you will reach the termination point. But you can use all and or all or. So, or is, that means if uh, one of them is uh, satisfied, then your algorithm will stop. It depends on you, how you want to uh, work with. So this is the initial point that I start, started with. And uh, if I run this cell, you'll see that uh, it gives the jig-jaggy path uh, of how you end up with the minimizer, the local minimizer. And uh, here you see this, at this point, we calculate the uh, di like value of beta, which gives the length of the direction. And uh, the selection of the direction of the st steepest descent is actually what matters for each of these algorithms. So this, this line uh, is what determines that. So delta equals to minus uh, the gradient divided by the norm of the gradient. So this equation 11. So now if you uh, want to collect again the values, you can do that using pandas. And uh, now there is uh, another uh, group of algorithms called conjugate gradient methods. And uh, here we use uh, so here I've written all the uh, like introductory kind of things. Like you can, if you want, you can go through them. But uh, previously we have introduced the first order. So in the previous algorithm, we just used the first order, uh, like uh, first order derivative. But uh, here we will use uh, also make use of the Hessians. So at each step, the search is given by this uh, value. So here delta is given by negative of the hash, uh, inverse of the Hessian. Uh, the do, so dot product of the negative of the inverse of the Hessian and the gradient. And uh, so once you have this delta, the direction, uh, you can choose the next step, xj from xj minus one using this uh, delta. But uh, yeah, we can do that here also. So an example. Uh, so here we have used the Bills function, which looks like uh, so. We'll implement the modified Newtons. Uh, okay. So this algorithm is actually called the modified uh, modified Newtons algorithm, and uh, uh, where uh, we use this delta j, this particular delta j. And uh, that's what I defined here in this function, defined, uh, defined modified Newton. And once you have that function, uh, once you have that function, you can calculate the uh, minimizer. So we see that the minimizer uh, ends up with uh, the value 3, 0 0.5. And if you want to calculate again, uh, calculate the steps and collect them again, you can do that. And here, there. So, like the most important thing is like this calculation of delta, delta j, which which is different for different algorithms. So delta, j, so delta j is the direction of the descent, and beta is the magnitude of that uh, like vector. So the most important thing is calculating beta using a one-dimensional optimization task, and how you choose delta. Uh, defines which algorithm you are using. So if delta j is given by just this simple formula, it's uh, steepest descent. And uh, if delta j is given by a slightly m modified version where you use the Hessian, it's called modified Newton's method. So that's it for this. I have two more. Uh, 
uh, notebooks. So the last portion was conjugate gradient uh, methods. So that's what I will discuss in detail here. Uh, I think I have 20 more minutes. I think I can complete that. So yeah, uh, introduction to conjugate gradient methods. Uh, so I'll try to complete this in the next 10 to 15 minutes. And then if you have questions, we can uh, like go through them. So the conjugate gradient methods are uh, frequently used for solving large linear systems of equations and also for solving nonlinear optimization problems. So uh, personally, I prefer this conjugate gradient methods if you want to uh, like uh, deal with uh, real, like what to say, complicated uh, nonlinear functions where the data is very uh, noisy. But uh, there is another uh, group called uh, uh, quasi-Newton, uh, which I will uh, introduce in the last notebook. So, so there are two subsections of this uh, conjugate gradient, me gradient methods. The first one is uh, linear conjugate gradient method. Uh, so this is an iterative method to uh, solve large linear systems again. Uh, where the coefficient matrices are positive definite. So this is the important part. So the coefficient matrices should be uh, positive definite. And uh, this can be treated as a replacement of the Gaussian elimination method. I think most of you have heard about Gaussian elimination method. And th the next one is the nonlinear conjugate gradient method. So here we will just uh, show Fletcher Reeves and Polar Cribbery if we have time. So these are the different um, methods based on different uh, approaches. So we'll see what those are. So in the linear conjugate gradient method, uh, the direction delta j is a linear combination of the preceding direction delta j minus 1 and the name of the residual. So this residual is uh, actually, so if you linear, uh, algebra problem. Uh, so most of you have uh, like come across this. Uh, uh, simple looking complicated thing where A is a matrix, X is a vector and B is again a, a vector. So you have to solve for X. Uh, so this is a this is the fundamental thing you do when you learn about uh, numerical methods to solve uh, linear algebra problems. So this is a linear algebra problem. And the res residual is, as we are using uh, numerical stuffs, so there will always be a, an error. Uh, so this residual is the error, which is given by Rx, uh, which is the difference between Ax and B. And uh, what we do do here is like we select the like uh, direction delta j from the previous uh, direction delta j minus one uh, using this equation where uh, this uh, xi xi is it xi xi j I forgot and what it's called actually but yeah uh, where this term is given by uh, uh, this formula where we use the transpose of the resi residual, the matrix A and the uh, direction delta J minus one. So we need XJ RX to calculate delta J. So an example again. So let us consider an objective function this. And uh, finding the minimizer of this objective function is equivalent to finding the solution of the equation given by ax equals to b, which is again a linear algebra problem. And this uh, a is given by this, uh, where a is given by this matrix, x is x1 comma x2 and b is 0 comma 2. So we can use linear conjugate gradient algorithm to solve this, but uh, just to be sure, uh, okay, so we'll consider the starting iterate to be this and the tolerance 10 to the power minus 5. Uh, okay, so this is the function that I define. Uh, this is the matrices A, matrix A and uh, the vector B. We can make sure that A is symmetric positive definite matrix because otherwise the algorithm will not work. 
So it is positive definite, and also it's symmetric. Mm. And uh, so you can use this uh, line of code to say whether it's symmetric or not. So symmetric in the sense like uh, the transpose of the matrix will be equals to that matrix. So it is symmetric. Uh, now we write the Python function, linear CG, uh, to calculate, like to implement the whole algorithm. And uh, so we use that function to uh, come up with uh, X star. That means uh, the minimizer. And we see that the solution of X star is given by minus 4, 4. And uh, the function, uh, and the f obviously the function value should be, uh, it's not obvious, but most of the times it's uh, very close to zero. But here, uh, I think it's less than 10 to the minus five. So that's why it's just returning zero. And uh, we can verify the result uh, is correct by using the trivial solution. So, so we so the trivial solution is given by uh, this. So this actually means the solution of x should be a inverse p. Right. So you can use numpy to just calculate the inverse of a and find the dot product between the inverse and b, and you see that the value is minus four comma four, which is similar to what we have gotten here. That works. <laughs> so that's the no linear conjugate gradient algorithm. And for the nonlinear uh, version, uh, first we use Fletcher Reeves. So here also the Fletch uh, in Fletcher Reeves, the descent direction is given by this formulation. So the first, uh, if you start like with j equals to 0, uh, the negative of uh, nebula f of xj is the first value. And uh, otherwise, if j is 1, like the, for the next values of j, you just keep on adding xj times del delta j. Actually, the dot product of xj and delta j to this first value. And uh, in the above equation, so you, like, uh, to calculate the next point, xj, you keep on adding uh, this portion beta j delta j to xj minus 1. And uh, where beta j is the j step, and xi j is uh, given by, again, I don't know whether it's xi j or chi j. Anyhow, so I think chi j. OK, I remember it. <laughs> so chi j is given by this uh, uh, formula. So again, an example. So uh, we define the function f of x1, comma x2, which is given by this objective function. We def like we calculate the gradient. Uh, next, we define the function Fletcher Reeves, uh, which is given by this whole implementation of the algorithm. And if you run this cell, uh, you will see that um, the minimizer is 1, comma 1, and the function, uh, the value of the function at that minimizer is almost zero, so it 10 to the power minus 11. So the order of 10 to the power minus 11. So we see that the minimizer is 1, 1, and if x star is very close to zero. Uh, so, the f so this is the um, figure of the like whole steps. Like It starts from this initial point, and then keep on choosing the direction and ending up uh, at the minimizer. <laughs> OK. I think it needs me to like walk <laughs> around it. <laughs> oh, it's working. Okay. <laughs> okay. So if you can uh, collect the values too, you can want uh, you can do that uh, just using pandas. Ooh, that's a long list. <laughs> and uh, for polar cribbery, uh, again, so it depends on how you choose this chi j. And here you use the first order derivative. And again, like uh, we can implement the whole uh, function. And uh, if you run this cell, you need to run this cell to uh, actually I put uh, the 
implementation here too. So in the same cell. So if you just run this cell, you will, uh, it will calculate the uh, like minimizer uh, along with the value of the function at that minimizer. <coughs> so we again see that uh, this also gives the correct result one comma one and uh, f of x star is zero. Again, so this shows the tra trajectory of the whole uh, optimization steps. There is another one, uh, Hager Zhang. Uh, so this is also a cool algorithm. So uh, uh, Noseland Wright's book has a detailed explanation, but I just put the uh, main thing. So Kaij, it cal we need Kaij. We need this uh, to calculate Kaij. We need this matrix AMJ, which is again, which is a function of this uh, direction delta. And also this uh, matrix NJ, which depends on the first order derivative of F. And then we uh, calculate QJ, which is used in MJ. <laughs> so yeah, but the important thing is this. So this is the whole formulation. Again, you can implement that in this function Hager Chang. And uh, yeah, so uh, you can do the similar things and you will see that it will end up uh, at the point one comma one. <coughs> And uh, so this this is an important uh, function. So scipy dot optimize dot minimize function. I think by so by inbuilt mechanism, it has the polar query uh, algorithm uh, like uh, implemented in it. So you can use this uh, function too, and you will see that it also ends up uh, with the same results. But here I have used a different function, which is the Woods function. Uh, so, and it works pretty fast actually. So you can use this also. And if you check uh, the previous function, I'm pretty sure it will end up with uh, one comma one. So yeah, the last slide. Uh, so uh, in this, so this is called the quasi-Newton methods. Uh, so here, in the previous algorithms, so like the computational tasks are pretty high. So one good thing with uh, quasi-Newton method is like, uh, so here we need, uh, analytically we need to calculate uh, the inverse of uh, the Hessian, which is not a good thing, good thing to do if you do this directly. But uh, like quasi-Newton method gives a way around and which uh, like the way around is calculating uh, an approximation of this inverse function. So as we already know, like we need to calculate this delta j, which is given by, uh, which is a function of both the gradient and uh, the Hessian. And uh, what quasi-Newton method does is like it replaces this uh, h inverse with this uh, matrix B. And w so B of X is actually analytically uh, H inverse of X, but uh, this quasi-Newton methods uh, give the approximation of this inverse matrix. So one of the good techniques is uh, following this uh, mechanism. So we, we use Taylor series then we do some manipulations, and we'll end up with this uh, uh, value matrix DJ, which can be used to uh, like calculate the, uh, like to update the like directions. So this uh, this equation is the second equation, and uh, as I said, like B is the approximate of the to the inverse of the Hessian matrix of the objective function at the jth iterate. And uh, B should be again symmetric and it should be positive definite. So these are the two conditions that should be maintained. Uh, so the first one is rank one update algorithm. So here uh, this B is given by this complicated looking, again this complicated looking function. So if you uh, want to like formula, if you want to understand how this is coming, you can either 
follow North Sutherland, right? Or follow my blog, or go through these steps. I think if you just go through these steps, uh, it will be clear. So, yeah, these are some skipping criteria and all some other stuffs, so we can, which you can skip for now. So just this, uh, for an example, I'm considering the Brennan function. So it has four uh, minimizers, uh, where, and it depends on where uh, you start the, like where you start your initial point. So here we again define the function, we def calculate the gradient in the cell, and then similarly as we did before, uh, if you, so this is the whole rank one uh, function which calculates the mm, direction, the value beta, and uh, gives the minimizer, and also gives the value of the function at that minimizer. So just run it. If you run this cell, you will see that uh, the initial point was here, and it ended up at this, this uh, point, which is actually 3 pi comma 2.4475. Uh, so this third, uh, this third uh, minimizer. And the value, uh, actually, the, what's the value? Value is 0 0.397887. Uh, let's see how, uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> So 0 0.397887, so it matches uh, for the first six uh, points, uh, like first six places after the decimal point. So I've just implemented the algorithm and it works pretty good. So that's really fascinating. <laughs> yeah. So if you can uh, just uh, collect the data and like plot the steps, uh, sorry, just uh, show the steps, you can do that using pandas and so, it gives the interval points uh, and the f of x and also the norm of the gradient. And the last one is the rank two update algorithm. Here, uh, uh, here again, like uh, beta is given by a separate uh, looking complicated function, uh, complicated formula. Uh, so we will use this uh, equation 30 instead of the other uh, rank one uh, formula. So the other things are completely same, just that uh, line we need to change in the codes. And again, we see that, uh, what function am I considering here? Uh, we are considering the Booth's function. And uh, if we start at this point, a random initial point, we see that it uh, like converges pretty fast to the uh, like minimizer, and there is this uh, DFP algorithm too. And uh, I have just uh, like shown the DFP like implementation and uh, the values that we gathered. That's it. That's it then. <laughs> so, any questions or stuffs? <laughs> I'm sorry for the hiccups, but yeah. I wish I could run the like cells, but it one is what two. it is. <laughs> one, two, one, two, is that working? Yep, cool. Um, yeah, do we have any questions from the audience? I don't think we have any online, but I'll double check before we close the session. Um, how's everybody doing? Oh, yep. Uh, the question is, I'll just repeat the questions for the online. Um, the question was, are there any, sorry, say it again. The that that you are there any libraries that um, implement these algorithms that you can grab? Yeah, so the thing is SciPy Optimize and SciPy, uh, the whole SciPy ecosystem provides most of the algorithms. What I have, like, whatever I have mentioned here, uh, like, I did it because I didn't find any package that time. So otherwise I would have used like uh, those packages because using a package is always a good idea because it works pretty fast instead of like uh, use, writing your own messy code, which is not, uh, the complexity is also, most of the times it will not be uh, good. But I wrote this because I didn't find any uh, package that time. 
So I think yeah, that's the answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, hi. So what are the typical applications of these algorithms? Uh, so, you know, this, uh, like, uh, in most of the machine learning courses, they start with this uh, optimization stuff, if you're familiar with machine learning. Uh, so that's one application. And uh, I think here we already know the structure of the function f. So here we are not trying to identify what f is actually. We are just trying to see how, what's the, like minimum value at of like what's the point at where at which the function f returns the minimum or the maximum value so this can be used in uh, any optimization stuffs like uh, root tracking path path tracking uh, what else climate can be a good uh, modeling scenario yeah cool. i think we have time for one more question if there's anyone Cool. If not, thank you very much. Uh, I think. Oh, oh yes. Sorry. Libraries and tools for constrained optimization. Yeah. The question. The question was: Was there libraries and tools for constrained optimization? Uh, so the. Uh, I'll try to. So there was one. I, I actually forgot the name of the package. I came across one uh, package. I'll give it a search. I will, uh, like, let's have a talk after uh, this. Then we can find out together. I, I knew, but I, sorry, I'm, I completely forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because constraint optimization is actually what is used in real world scenarios. Yeah, because unconstrained is very ideal. So you will not come across unconstrained uh, problems most often, but Obviously, the constraint ones you will come across most of India. So yeah, I'll let you know. Okay. Cool. OK, so um, that's us for now. Lunch will be over in the gym. In one hour, uh, at 1.40 PM, we have a plenary session. So that's everybody down in the Great Hall before the next set of tutorials start. They started, I think, 2.20 PM, but double check your schedules. Um, I think we can all say that for a man who just gave a two-hour talk where everything blew up at the start, Indra just did a magnificent job. So please give him a Thank round you. of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.